tweaked a little to something like policy and compliance, uh, or compliance and policy, something like that. So the idea is to, uh, to actually uh, sort of define what an organization could be doing to effectively address the compliance requirements that they have and to effectively build policy. So that's one area, uh, or sorry, another area that you could improve. You have strategic planning, which I think is going to be changed to something like strategy and metrics to sort of emphasize the metrics focus a little bit more. But the idea here is that, uh, you know, how do you actually set, the, set the, uh, the agenda or the roadmap for your actual assurance program in your organization? And there's degrees of sophistication that you can go about making those decisions. And so we have levels of improvement within that itself. When you get to requirements and design, uh, you have threat modeling. So, and one of the names that we're considering for this is actually attack modeling, just to kind of deconflict it with the Microsoft definition of, of threat modeling. Uh, because really what we're talking about here is how do you actually look at your piece of software and decide what kinds of possible risks you have against it from the, from the threats in the outside world? Um, you have security requirements. What are you doing proactively to actually uh, build up the, the, the set of requirements that actually get handed to the development team so that they know what they should be doing proactively for building security features? You have uh, defensive design um, that basically involves what, what kinds of uh, activities are you doing to, to prescribe for your development teams beforehand what standards and, and things of that nature they need to be complying with. So uh, any type of development standards, if you have reference frameworks that you want people to use, particular library recommendations and so forth. Um, you have architecture review, uh, and actually the third column should maybe be pretty understandable for most people, right? So you can, you can analyze your architecture, you can analyze the code, and you can analyze the running system that you have. So those are really the, the three different types of assessments that you can do, and, and you have different degrees of sophistication to which you could do each of those three. Uh, and then the last column we have vulnerability management, which is how are you doing incident management, and really how are you uh, managing vulnerability reports and things of that nature. Uh, infrastructure hardening. Now, this is one. That, this, this last column we're changing around a few of the names too, because infrastructure hardening sounds like this big operational thing, and we're not trying to play in the operational space. We're keeping it oriented around the software. So I think something like infrastructure hardening is going to be renamed to, to really like uh, software environment. It's really what it's uh, what it's uh, about. Um, and then you have operational enablement, which is really. Um, more about actual release process itself. So it's not really about your general operational environment, just about the release process for concerning a piece of software or how you go about it. So these 12 boxes are what we're, we're calling functions, or your security functions that need to be uh, addressed within an organization. So what do you actually get underneath each of those functions? So each function, as I mentioned before, represent an area of improvement, right? So if you have an area of improvement, we have, we've assigned three levels uh, that you could actually achieve in each one of those 12 uh, functions. So there's sort of an implicit zero, uh, and then level one means that it's kind of ad hoc and being done a little bit, basically. And so we've designed uh, the, the level ones for across all 12 of the functions to basically be something that you could do at a grassroots level within an organization. So without having top management buy-in and a huge wave of, of, of change and activity, you could have people that are on the ground in a given dev team accomplish level one in pretty much all 12 of those, uh, of those areas. Um, when we get to level two, what we're really talking about is increasing either the efficiency or the efficacy of, the, of, the, of that particular security function, right? Um, and then when you get to level three, we're talking about some comprehensive mastery at scale, right? So it, for an enterprise organization, how do you actually do this uh, as, as best as it can be done? So um, underneath each objective, uh, well, I'm sorry, I didn't actually introduce the term objective. What, what we did was instead of calling these three things levels, we actually used an objective statement to categorize what it means to be at that level. Um, and I'll actually break this down on the next slide. But uh, there's a lot of information that goes along with it. So each objective has specific activities defined. So for each of these levels, you have activities that you need to be doing for your organization. It gives you uh, some, some details about the success metrics. So what does it mean to actually be performing at that level? And what are the metrics that you can use to measure yourself to see if you're actually performing at that level? Um, there's the, the personnel investments uh, required. There's the, the, the straight cost investment required to, to get to that level. And then there's benefits for your organization. So, to, to make this a little bit uh, more uh, more understandable, if you I'm going to flip back to the previous slide, the education and guidance box. I'm just going to dive into that because I have not nowhere near enough time to dive into all the details underneath each of these. Uh, but I'll just blow up the education and guidance box, and just to give you a feel for what, what each of these functions brings to the table. So, 
education and guidance box, you have the three levels underneath it, right? So what you see in EG1, EG2, and EG3 are the three objectives that, that or the successively more sophisticated objectives, right? So as an organization, you would start with level one, which these, what you see in the boxes below are the activities that are defined for each of these. And the activities are cumulative, right? Uh, so the idea is that under level one, the first thing you need to be doing is just conducting some awareness training and generally putting together some technical guidance for your, for your development staff. Now, when you want to step that up to the next level, to the next level of, of sophistication for education and guidance, you would go to EG2 where you're now going to be doing role-specific training and you're actually going to go through your organization and appoint security coaches in different parts of your organization so you have sort of hands on the ground when it comes to application security. Uh, when you want to make that even more sophisticated, you get to level three, where you're creating a more formal support portal for your development staff, and you're also uh, establishing some role-based examinations and certifications of your, of your employees so that you can make sure that people actually understand the material that you expect them to understand. So does that make sense for the most part, how, how these get more sophisticated as you move up? Okay, so this is just a breakout of one of them. We actually uh, have a lot of materials that we've built sort of as beta um, that were, uh, that, uh, Basically, there, there's, there's just loads and loads of details here about, uh, about all of these things. So, uh, in any case, let's uh, sort of talk about how you would actually use this now. So, if, if this model makes sense in general, uh, how it's structured, we can talk about sort of the phased approach to improvement. Now, the way you would improve an organization is actually rather simple, I, at least in, in theory. You would, take, you would pick the security functions that you want to improve in the next iteration of your, of your dev program, or your assurance program, I should say, and then you would accomplish the next level in each one of those security functions. So basically, planning an assurance program becomes selecting from the 12 which ones you're going to improve next, and then improving them by actually upgrading your, your, you know, the activities that you're doing and making sure that you're performing at the next level of success metrics that are defined. So it's, it should be relatively straightforward. Any questions so far? Make sense? OK. Uh, so this was actually, uh, so I, this was kind of being built as a, um, as the next uh, sort of iteration of CLASP, as I mentioned before, right? Um, but this was being funded by, by, I'm an independent consultant. I was uh, funded to do the work from Fortify. So um, we're actually working with them, and I'm going to defer the rest of that to this man that's sitting behind you. Um, yes, Brian Jess, who will be able to talk about the release plans for it, because we're, we've, we've already shared this with a lot of individuals, right? We haven't announced it fully yet, because what we really want is to get more feedback and to have a little more uh, like actual practical experience put on it before we say this is the model that everyone should be using, because Senate, I, I think we're, we're willing to share it with anybody that's interested in, in, in having it. We just haven't like put it up on a wiki and announced it to the whole world yet because we want to put some more miles on it first. So if you're interested in, in getting a copy of it, not a problem. We can, we can give you a copy of it. it was our, there was a link sent out to the OWASP CMM list. Um, I, I believe I sent out a link to the OWASP class list uh, so that people could just download the PDF of, of this book that I'm holding right here. So. Um, yes, yeah, so, but it's still very much in beta, so that's, that's one thing that we want to emphasize. We're still working on actually categorizing it all. Yep. So we're going to turn it on. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> 